On March 21st, 1962, the U.S. Air Force conducted an experiment. A new high-speed bomber called a B-58 needed to test a state-of-the-art ejection capsule to keep pilots safe in case something went wrong in Mach 2. But to test the new ejection system, they didn't use crash test dummies or even prefer human volunteers. They used bears. Footage shows the retrieval of Yogi, one of the bears in the experiment. Yogi was later brought back to the facility and his injuries were examined. The experiment led to improved and safer escape capsules. But that's not the only bizarre experiment the U.S. government has ever conducted on animals. Our country has tried to use cats as spies and bats as flying incendiary bombs. We are going to get to all that before we wrap this up with a very serious question. How much LSD does it take to kill an elephant? Because of the CIA, we know the answer. Welcome to Dates and Dead Guys. But before we get to our stories, I research historical topics I find interesting and explain them in the way that I would to my friends. If that is your kind of thing and you like these videos, leave a like on the channel and consider subscribing. It helps me out. But let's get to our stories. Just a month after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt was called into a meeting with a man named Lytle Adams. Adams told Roosevelt that he could develop a weapon that could destroy Japanese cities. Best yet is that the plan would put the absolute minimum risk on the lives of American citizens. Adams wanted to glue bombs to bats and then drop them from planes onto the enemy. And Roosevelt? He said yes. The plan was called Project X-Ray, and it's a weird one. Adams teamed up with American scientists and military personnel for his bat project. They set up camp in New Mexico and began their experiments. They examined dozens of species of bats to find just the right one. They settled on the Mexican free-tailed bat. The plan was to strap incendiary vices to the bats and then release them. When the bats were released, they would do what bats do, go find shelter or cover, hopefully in Japanese buildings. Then the incendiaries would go off and begin to spread fires. It sounds crazy, but there is a method to the madness. Japanese cities were very susceptible to fire in the 1940s. The buildings were made of highly flammable materials, and they were typically rather close together, meaning fire could spread. What the team had to do was develop the right type of incendiaries and delivery system before they could test their product for final approval. As part of the project, Adams teamed up with a scientist, Dr. Pfizer. He's the man who developed napalm. If you don't know what napalm is, it is a jellied gasoline that burns on any surface it gets on. We use this on people in Vietnam. It's horrifying. Have you ever watched the napalm scene in We Were Soldiers? If you want nightmares, Google it after this video. In order for this to work, the bombs had to be attached to the bats. Bats don't cooperate with that, so to manage and ship the bats, you have to essentially freeze them. They would use ice to drop their temperature under 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This would put the bats in a state of hibernation. They would then glue small napalm bombs to the bat's chest. That does mean that when the bomb goes off, it is still attached to the bat. They were kind of like our own little kamikazes. We were actually not the only country to try to make animals into bombs. Russia tried to create anti-tank dogs. They would train dogs wearing explosive vests to run under enemy tanks where they would then detonate. The program didn't do great. When deployed in 1941, the terrified dogs mostly avoided German tanks and ran back either to the Soviet trenches or under Soviet tanks. The bombs then detonated, killing Russians instead of Germans. I hope nothing like that happens in our bat experiment. After the bombs were attached to the bats, they would be loaded in these egg carton-like containers. The containers were then placed in a bomb-shaped metal tube. The tube would be dropped from the plane and the metal sides would pop off. The warm air and descent would wake the bats from hibernation. Then they would fly out and hide before the bombs exploded. But the project got stuck in development. In one experiment, the bats never woke up from hibernation, and when the bomb was dropped, they all just fell to their death. In an even more cartoonish failure, a team of photographers came to Carlsbad Airfield where tests were being performed. The bats were placed in the sun to be photographed, already rigged up with the bombs. They woke up because the sun is hot, and then they flew away. They hid inside the base, and a good portion burned down as a result. That's not good. But that's not what got the project canceled. Unfortunately for Adams, with the government anticipating the success of the Manhattan Project, Project X-Ray was shut down in mid-1944 and never used in combat. So I guess you could say the Japanese got off easy. Just as well. The project in total cost an estimated $2 million. I have no idea if that includes the barracks that were destroyed. But don't worry, it wouldn't be long before the CIA was spending a lot more than that to figure out that cats don't make good spies. 
Have you ever had a conversation with a friend about something personal when a third person walks into the room? You don't know them well. Maybe you don't trust them with personal information. It's uncomfortable. Even if the topic is innocent enough, it shifts and the original conversation stops. People are reluctant to share with strangers. But imagine that same scenario. But instead of a third person entering a room, it's a strange cat. Would your conversation stop now? Of course not, but maybe it should because in the 1960s, the CIA was counting on that. Cold War intelligence took some strange turns, and one of my favorites is Operation Acoustic Kitty. Cats were to be used as spies at Soviet embassies. The plan was to train cats fitted with recording devices to enter the space of CIA targets. A surgeon would implant a microphone in the cat's ear, as well as a radio transmitter at the base of its skull. An antenna to pick up the signal would be concealed by being woven into the cat's fur. As silly as the image looks, the issue with the operation was not the equipment. It's that animals are a little bit unpredictable, like our bat bombs or anti-tank dogs. Journalist Emily Anthes wrote an article in which she explained what happened at the first official test of the program. Quote, CIA staffers drove Acoustic Kitty to the park and tasked it with capturing the conversation of two men sitting on a bench. Instead, the cat wandered into the street, where it was promptly squashed by a taxi. End quote. If it had to cross the street, they probably should have used frogs. But on the bright side, it was just a cat with some radio equipment. It's not like the operation was wildly expensive. It was wildly expensive. A CIA officer named Victor Marchetti suggested the program cost $20 million. Money the CIA spent to learn what everyone who's ever been around cats already knows. Using cats as spies was not going to be practical, because they are jerks who do not cooperate. Although, the CIA did say in their official report that the program, quote, is in itself a remarkable scientific achievement, knowing that cats can indeed be trained to move a short distance, end quote. The program was shut down in 1967. Maybe. We have some questions about the birds. But intelligence is important business. And despite the controversy around animal testing, the CIA felt that they had to know some things. Like, how much LSD you need to kill an elephant. In 1953, the CIA appointed a new director, Alan Dulles. Dulles was very concerned about what he termed as brain warfare. In Korea, American soldiers sometimes came back changed, admitting to crimes they didn't commit or having become communists. Dulles believed that pervasive brain techniques were being mastered by our enemies in order to control our thoughts and behavior. Early into his stint as CIA director, he approved what may be the most notorious of all CIA operations. MK Ultra. The program purpose, at least in principle, was behavior modification. Agents ran experiments using electroshock therapy, hypnosis, and even drugs. Not all of it was ethical. One subproject called Midnight Climax had prostitutes knowingly dose Johns with LSD to see how they reacted, all supervised through a one-way mirror. Nothing creepy there. It's probably worth an episode by itself, but it's well-tread ground. It gets weird. And I bring that up because these men were cowboys, with budgets and ideas. As weird as Midnight Climax was, an experiment in 1962 involving an elephant named Tusco is my winner. A psychiatrist named Jolly West wanted to see how a massive dose of LSD would impact an elephant. They were studying a phenomenon called must. In must, bull elephants experience massive spikes of testosterone and aggression. West wanted to see if LSD would trigger this reaction in elephants. Why? unclear. Tusco was the prize of the Oklahoma City Zoo. West gave Tusco a dose of LSD 30 times what a person the size of an elephant would get. He didn't react well. Within five minutes, the elephant was seizing on the ground. After 20 minutes, Tusco was given a large dose of an antipsychotic drug called Thorazine, and then later a tranquilizer. Bad news is that Tusco died. Good news is that it probably wasn't the acid. Somehow, in 1984, the experiment was repeated with just the LSD and with two elephants, both who lived. Weird coincidence, Jolly West, a year after he murdered Tusco, would be the psychiatrist assigned to Jack Ruby, after Ruby killed Lee Harvey Oswald. After meeting with West, the man working with MKUltra on brain warfare, Ruby was pronounced psychotic. Definitely a coincidence, though. Believe it or not, when I started this episode, I intended to research government attempts at mind control. But I got sucked in some rabbit holes and wound up on the much lighter topic of animal experimentation. Literally every animal mentioned in this show died. Even the bear at the beginning. 
You'll remember that a bear was ejected from a plane in order to check for the safety of the capsule. After they initially checked the bear for injuries, they euthanized him and dissected him in order to take a closer look. Anyway, don't forget to leave a like on the channel. And if you would like to see the originally planned episode on attempts at mind control, let me know in the comments. Spoiler alert, they don't work. R.I.P. Tusco.